Um, you know, for every Roku, Baba, Spotify, Google, Square, Apple, Beyond, Zoom, uh, Shopify, all the stocks are red. You still have a lot of good green, big moves uh, in the semiconductors, uh, in Netflix, in Tesla. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com night wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So, you know, we had not, we, I really didn't have any expectations uh, going into today's session. We talked about uh, the potential continuation of a distribution cycle that started last uh, Wednesday. You can see here with that big, big reversal here after 10 days in a row of upward bias. So we really didn't know what to expect. Matter of fact, uh, when I woke up this morning, I saw the futures surging up 200 points. I said, well, it's going to be a little tricky today, obviously, but you know, let's see what happens. Because again, uh, when you looked at the news today, uh, futures spiking pre-market because uh, first distribution of the vaccines, obviously that's a good thing. Hope springs eternal, that it works. Like I said in the, in the weekend update, there's no side, at least no major side effects, and we can kind of uh, go on with our lives. So things were very, very optimistic. The problem is when you get a distribution cycle and you have some sort of news, it's going to push a lot of stocks into supply. And the one thing when you're trading in the distribution cycle, right, things are stuck in channels, the upper supply and then there's the lower demand. And if everything gaps up into upper supply, what happens is stocks will get rejected in that area because distribution is getting through and things will get pulled down. So if you look at a lot of beta names today, that's exactly what happened. You looked at Square, right? You got Square uh, gapped up, sold off. You had Apple, right? Gapped up, sold off. You had Facebook uh, gapped up, sold off. S slowly but surely. Google, uh, same thing, right? Gapped up, sold off. So I really didn't have a lot of, you know, I really didn't have a lot of conviction today based on what I knew potentially what, what could have happened and what did happen in a lot of names. The greatest thing about the stock market is, and, and trading as a whole, um, sometimes things happen when you least expect it. So, for example, if you would have told me Google, Facebook, Apple, a slew of other names, gapped up into supply, came back in, and everything was all, you know, everything looked crappy, and you told me, oh, by the way, the same day that Amazon, Tesla, and Netflix are going to wake up, it, it obviously wouldn't make any sense, but that's exactly what happened today. And this is why I always say, uh, trading is the greatest reality show that's not on television. You just don't know what to expect. And the most important part is you have to be ready for anything, especially uh, in 2020, which is, again, we're only two weeks away. Uh, a lot of people are kind of uh, winding down their year, including myself. Uh, and I said this morning, I said, look, I, you know, I have no expectations today. I don't even see a lot of value today uh, after that gap up into supply. And then little by little, uh, little by little, we started seeing things wake up. Uh, Netflix was awesome today. Tesla is Tesla. We'll get to that in a second. Amazon had a monster, monster move. Uh, after the close today, we saw, and again, this is where we talk about people know, right? People always know, especially in the options market. All day today, we saw the hundreds, 105 call buyers coming in. After the close, uh, Goldman Sachs upgrades AMD. Ta-da, right? Uh, they also upgraded MU, right? MU surging, and they also upgraded uh, Intel. Okay, so the, you know, again, there was a massive call in the sem semiconductor space, and obviously they make up predominantly uh, the majority of the NASDAQ 100. So it's going to be, again, curious to see if they could pull up the whole group uh, tomorrow. And the one thing, speaking of the NASDAQ 100, we talked about on the weekend video how important that 304 level is. Any close over 304 is bullish. Any close under 304 uh, continues to be in a distribution cycle. So what did the market do today? Obviously, it closed it right at 304. Obviously just to screw us a little bit more. But the action today was very, very good, right? Uh, very good, aggressive. Again, you saw really aggressive call buying uh, in Amazon today. And we saw 
the 3300s, this, uh, for the weeklies, the 3200s, the 3300s, the 3400s, uh, we started seeing really aggressive call buyers even for January. And the key for Amazon was, at least initially, that first channel over 3160. And we'll talk about the pivots in a second. And obviously, what did Amazon do, just like, like the Qs did? It closed right at the 50-day moving average again. Not leaving this not here nor there. Uh, but Netflix broke out today. Really, really big move on Netflix. Like this is my move today. This is my uh, uh, my play today. Netflix closed well. Took out this whole channel here. Again, we're seeing uh, 530 weeklies uh, coming in, 535s. So Netflix looks really, really good. Tesla, again, we talked about over the weekend. They absorbed uh, that offering within, what, two, three days. Uh, took out this whole channel. Uh, reclaimed the five-day moving average, and the only reason why it stopped here was the linear regression line. And Tesla is literally one or two days away from reclaiming reclaiming this linear regression line, uh, testing those uh, 654 highs, and then again you see this beeline move uh, potential all the way to 700. And again, if you look at the pattern of activity uh, that the in the in the call market, right in the options market, in the last several weeks, you see. Millions of dollars being poured in on the 660s, the 700 calls, weekly calls, just the same way uh, we saw it today. Again. So again, Tesla looks higher uh, as well. So you know, I like what the market's doing. I, you know, I still like what these SPACs are doing. Uh, IPOB had a really, really aggressive move today. Had some more juice after hours. So these SPAC names continue to continue to be. Uh, very, very good as well. So again, I, I think the key is every single day coming in just with an open mind. I, I, again, let technicals tell us which way the wind is going to blow. But I, again, if you look at the dynamics of kind of where we are, which we're only what, uh, t 10 days away from Christmas, uh, two weeks away from the end of 2020, it's going to be very, very tough for the bears to seize control that's so obvious unless something really comes out and again uh you can make a case that oh the dow sold off because concerns of uh more COVID spikes and but again you know at, at the same time you know we get that part we're all trying to be responsible adults we're trying to save small business at the same time but we also have this vaccine now that's finally saw its first distribution so the headlines kind of don't make sense to kind of where we are don't we have to, as just human beings or you know, even as traders, have to give these, you know, this antivirus uh, vaccine the kind of the benefit of the doubt? So I think that's what's going to be the next chapter uh, going into the first quarter of 2021. So we'll see. So every single day, guys, from now uh, until, the ten, until the end of the year, again, just have an open mind. Uh, bulls continue to be in control. There obviously is a disconnect between the Dow and the NASDAQ today. There's also a disconnect in a lot of beta names. Again, for every, uh, you know, for every Roku, Baba, Spotify, Google, Square, Apple, Beyond, Zoom, uh, Shopify, all the stocks are red. You still have a lot of good green, big moves uh, in the semiconductors, uh, in Netflix, in Tesla. So again, trade individual names very, very specifically. And again, let technical analysis be your guide instead of what you think uh, is going to happen. So again, if you look at uh, the scoreboard today, uh, Q's again, even though they gave us an inverted hammer, which is a bearish sign. Okay, don't think for a second uh, inverted hammer. If you see an inverted hammer here, that's a sell sign. But I don't know, right? I don't know. Semiconductors got upgraded after the close. You know, can we, you know, get a sell-off back in the queues tomorrow? We'll, we'll see. But again, I think it's predicated on how strong uh, the semi names can be, and can they continue to drag uh, everything up after the Goldman Sachs up, uh, upgrade on the semi names uh, after the close? We'll see. You know, we'll see there. Uh, if you look at IWM. Um, again, same thing. You have this inverted hammer, but at the same time, you have three days in a row of higher lows, right? So again, the market is kind of wishy-washy. It's not really giving us uh, a lot of conviction. The Dow, again, uh, got rejected. And again, folks, when we talk about stocks going from supply to supply and demand to demand, again, here's a perfect example that emotional buyers met technical sellers right at the Bollinger Band. Guess who won? So a technical analysis works. So, you know, tomorrow, you know, make your watch list. Uh, again, Netflix looks really, really good. Uh, Tesla, again, maybe, you know, Tesla has one more day of sideways action. But again, you can see the top of this range uh, that should get, it should get tested. You know, I, I mean, this is, I'll tell you one thing. NVIDIA has to be, 
and it had a phenomenal run this year. And I, you know, we've done incredibly well with the name. But boy, oh boy, over the last month or so, this by far has to be the most disappointing name, along uh, with Amazon as well. But again, I'm watching it tomorrow. If it could reclaim the 50-day moving average, right? Can it possibly wake up then? Right? We'll see. So that's that. So, you know, I'm kind of delta neutral going into tomorrow. You know, the fact that uh, a lot of the indexes put in either inverted hammers or uh, got rejected of supply. Is that really what I want to see on the bullish case of tomorrow? No, but at the same time, again, we have no fear. Uh, there is no materialistic reason to turn around tomorrow and say sell everything. But again, will it shock me if they rug pull the same way they did on Wednesday? No, no, nothing. Nothing is shocking as long as you are uh, prepared for it and you're not naive to think nothing can go wrong. I think you'll be fine. So trade everything trade by trade one day at a time. Go into the new year. Start off 2021 uh, with a fresh head with no bias. And we'll see what happens for this year. Other than that, again, uh, you don't need a, you, you didn't need a lot today. And that was the most important part. You really did not uh, need to be in 500 stocks. The stocks that woke up uh, today were the stocks that we traded. These were beta names. These were names that we covered throughout the years. And I, I tell you one thing, I, I think this year got really, really lost. As much as like Amazon put on some really big moves this year, Amazon also had like five or six months that it didn't do anything. And the same thing with Netflix and the same thing with a lot of these beta names. If I had to say, you know, if I had to have a bold prediction kind of going into 2021, if there is going to be any type of strength, I have to assume these stocks are going to wake up at some point and really start going on a majestic run. And as great as these SPACs have been and these EV names, there's no greater feeling. And for all you guys who trade technology and beta names, there's no greater fe feeling being on board of a runaway train on Netflix, on Amazon, on Facebook, on Apple. So fingers crossed, hopefully money uh, will rotate into these names. So let's talk about today. Uh, again, not a lot of things confirmed, but the ones that did did incredibly well. Uh, Apple didn't confirm. Uh, Boeing didn't confirm. I was watching this SPAC name. Uh, this didn't confirm. I was watching this SLDB name. This didn't confirm. Uh, ZS, not a big move. Uh, I still like it. I uh, have to watch it this week. We talked about this uh, 185 level. I uh, traded up to 87.5. But again, a little disappointing that it didn't make that push. But I still want to watch the top of the range here uh, for the rest of the week. And here is, you know, again, here is Tesla. Just an absolute monster. Uh, people, you know, people were asking me over the weekend, you know, what did I think? You know, what did I think Tesla on this, uh, on this uh, offering? And, you know, once Tesla absorbed this offering a couple of days ago, the price action spoke louder than words. And today, all it needed to do was confirm Friday's high, was which is 624. That's why I, why I put 625 sneaky. And the macro range from last week, 628.30. And Tesla exploded. I mean, really, Tesla just really went ballistic and stopped right at supply here uh, with a high of 643. So really good move on Tesla. Uh, Amazon, again, uh, Amazon macro play, any close over 3160 is bullish. And Amazon really exploded off that opening print. And the most, uh, the, the disappointing part about Amazon, it was building, if you look at the whole day, it was building majority of the day above the 50 day moving average and the market got pulled and it closed right below it. So, you know, here was a 6160 and it literally, you know, put up like a $35, $40 candle. And I really thought this is the day it was gonna start piercing 3,200, especially with all the call buying, but ran out of juice uh, towards the end of the day. Um, Amber, I like this Amber chart. It's just the problem with this chart is it's thin. But look at the setup, guys. Look at the setup on Amberella. If this was Tesla or Amazon and Netflix, man, I'd be in this thing with two hands, two feet, and every other part of my body. I mean, but this thing just trades so thin, 450,000 shares. I'd like to see, if you guys are trading smaller shares, you know, keep an eye on it above like today's high. If it starts building, there's a lot of room uh, that it has. Just unfortunately, it's a little too thin for me. Uh, Netflix was, was really good today. Uh, not only did it confirm the sneaky candle uh, off that 508, it confirmed the 50, the recent range highs. Um, I got long in that opening range at 510. Really big move on Netflix. I still think it goes higher. So it took out this 508, right? Here's 508 is this whole... Uh, 508 was the linear regression line. It was right over here. So it took that out and then it took out that 521.50, which was last week's high. 
uh, and traded all the way up to uh, 524. If this thing starts confirming, look how much room you have uh, for the rest of the week. So definitely keep an eye on, on Netflix. Great, great mover. Uh, Twitter, a little disappointing. I caught this for a scalp, but it really didn't do anything. It was really disappointing considering we were sitting there and just watching you know, the 55 calls coming in. So it took out this 53. It ran up, you know, put up like 40, 50 cents, and then just, just didn't do anything. Very, you know, a little bit disappointing there on Twitter, but you know, I took a little cash flow there. So again, here is the call buying that came in, which is very, very odd that it sold off towards the end of the day. Um, first move went to 517. Obviously, 517 turned into 525. Uh, you know, again, exploding, uh, exploding 660, 700 calls came in, and here is kind of uh, the thought process behind all these uh, moves. So we had a lot of really uh, big moves today, but these moves were kind of condensed, right? Really condensed here. Uh, the 530 weeklies were coming in as well. So I think going into tomorrow, uh, let's be open-minded. I still, you know, I still want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. But again, folks, always keep in the back of your mind that nothing needs to happen. Always take money along the way. Always use break even as your stop. And again, remember, there's no such thing as slam dunks, right? You could look at the data, you could look at the chart, everything looks great, it's going your way, yada, yada, yada. You better take money along the way because again, if not, they'll take it right back. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.